culture, uh, how to combine local culture with modern technology in a way that is used quite differently than that is used in the United States. And I definitely appreciate Emmanuel and all of the staff that has helped me manage and negotiate fair prices throughout the market. <laughs> There's Emmanuel right there. <laughs> I can't tell you that, it's written somewhere. <laughs> I expect to go in and walk around and walk by machines and hear somebody talking and saying stuff and keep going and eventually get out of there. Not at all. There's a woman, corporate lawyer, who owns this. We got history, as Lance has said, from the beginning. We learned about cocoa beans the other day, one of these days already. But Actually, someone started it in this area because he spent five years elsewhere watching what happened with those cocoa beans. When he came back to his country, they were shocked because they'd already had a funeral for him, okay? It took about 20, I think about 20 years, and he got it going. And what she intends to do, and I jump all over the place I'm talking, is, um, start her own farm and farm the beans herself and it's going to be up there in the area up in the hill where we went I think was the first day or the second day Avery. whatever day that up the hill that area and she also is from this area she was with us through the whole process with her apron her head her what do you call it, shower cap her gloves the whole thing she was and she served us the wine along with our white wine, along with our white and brown chocolate and, and whatever. And we also, basically, that was our lunch there also. And it was a light lunch, but it was, for, as far as I'm concerned, it, was, it couldn't have been a more perfect ending day for this event. And I cannot praise that man, Morris, enough. Morris takes care uh, he's taking care of me. I left my phone at the theater last night. Discovered it when I got back to the room because I decided I want to take a picture of Tanya and me and opened up this thing and there was no phone in it. And I knew where I left it, right there where you put your drink. I told Mars, he said, okay, let's get on the van, the bus. We were on the bus and probably in less than 10 minutes we were back there. Uh, I don't see the, the guy who was driving that bus I think he's the one who's head of that bus. He made a phone call as we were getting on the bus and a different driver got on and drove. We were out there. When we got there, there he is. I saw this driver get out and he went to his car. This man got on, started driving. I mean, the way things were coordinated and we were back here. I have every intention of getting back here. I have no intention of keeling over. <laughs> I don't know that I'll make it back for my 82nd birthday, which is in December, but I do expect to be back in Ghana. I don't know that I will be willing and ready and able to buy property, but definitely I know I want to come and stay for a while. So I need to find some place that I can rent for a month or two. When it's cold and when it's, I mean, where I live, but when it's warm down here. Unbelievable. What you have shown us is we can do it. We can do what needs to be done. I am totally impressed with seeing these young kids out there watching. I watched the young guys watch the older guys yesterday. They were watching. Their eyes were on all the things these men were saying and doing. I have, I'm, I'm, I've been independent probably all my life, and it's not easy for me to be still and let somebody do something for me. But Marsh did tell me to sit down when I was getting ready to get off the bus yesterday to get my phone. He was going to bring it to me. I, anyway, I love it. I love it. I love it. And I don't say that a lot about stuff. But I've been saying that about this place since I got here. I love it. And yes, I intend to return. All right. Um, but to Freddie, 
And Jay, what they put together here is phenomenal. I'm a college professor and for like the last 25 years I've taught African, African American studies and I've talked about this stuff. A lot of it I know, but to come and put your hands on it, to see it, makes a world, a world of difference. And to meet all of you all at the same time is uh, uh, priceless, priceless. If I could do, if I could have done this when I was 19, it would have impacted me a, a whole lot more. The things that impacted me probably <clears throat> the most was the Slave River, because that part of our history doesn't really get talked about what actually happened to us, the torture, and of course the, the dungeons just really bring it home. Those things I think impacted me the most. The other thing that impacted me with the children, you, you're riding along and you wave at them and they literally just light up. They're like, because you see them. Even the, the adults, acknowledgement that you see them. And that's, I think, is important to be acknowledged. And uh, I don't know what else to say. I'm not going to talk a lot, but I appreciate all of you all and the experiences that we've had here together. And Jay, Jay wasn't lying, was he? He told us this is going to be this way, this is going to be that way, and that's exactly how it happened. <laughs> so we appreciate it. Thank you. No, 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 the one thing I could not anticipate, the, those floods. <laughs> <laughs> and if you see my video, you see I got caught in the floods. <laughs> I was sitting in the you car and actually, car, I was like, wait, he said, there's water in the car. And I, I said, I said, there is. And I looked and the water was coming in and we were both sitting there like, he was cool. I was sitting back there like, now how did this happen? How did so, this happen? Um, I think most of you, know, I've talked to just about everybody that's been on this trip over the last, you know, seven days or so. And um, I wanted, I'm so glad that I made this trip. I turned 50 this year in August. And so this was something that I wanted to do. <laughs> Good to see 50. <laughs> so this, this has been a milestone year in so many ways, but coming to Africa was, it was the dream of a lifetime. And this has been the trip of a lifetime. I think I, most of you know that I'm a genealogist. And so coming here and just making those connections here in the motherland in Ghana has just meant so much to me. And I think I've been telling, I told somebody that being here, it felt different, but not foreign. And that was the best way that I could describe it. And so I'm just, I'm so glad to have been here. And even with all, with the heat and everything else and the sweating, I remember thinking it's, but in some ways it was kind of like a detox to sort of get rid of all the misinformation and disinformation that so many of us have learned or not learned about what this, this place is. And so I'm just so glad to be able to take it back to the people that I know and just let them know that, you know, you should come here. This is where we started and it's important. So Daddy Morris took care of us because we could be acting stupid. Morris said, I said, stop. We said, okay. Yeah. And we stopped. You will be on this bus. And if you were going and you were shopping, and well, maybe, and then you would feel a hand on your shoulder. Okay, I got to go. Because <laughs> when Morris said it, you did it. Um, I was looking for some clothes. I said, oh, I still need to get something. I'm looking at that store, Wooden. I'm going to get off the bus today. He said, sit down. I said, okay. We went to Wooden. He went in with me looking at stuff, giving me even advice. Oh, what do you think with this, that, and the other? I mean, he helped all of us. We know he helped many of us with, with our bargaining. He yes. was having us do it, but we could walk over and go, doesn't this seem good? Or if it was really bad, he'd go over and tell the person, like, I know you lost your natural mind, thinking <laughs> that you were gonna charge this person this, and they'd be like, oh yeah, we did, we sorry. You know, so he took care of us but also let us know that it was something that we could do, you know? And I watched him watch us bargaining like he was a proud father, you know? So I appreciated that too, but thank you very Ladies much. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, I just want to tell you the importance of this trip. As you know, my kids are part of the Sankofa Club, which teaches them about their history in a positive way. Um, they work with amazing teachers. Miss Gwen Ebron works with them on Saturdays and Sundays, and the kids are so happy to learn about their history. We have Aunt Didi who sings songs. So to hear them learn about their history 
with a positive spin on it and they're happy to do that because they go to school and they told me during Black History Month no one was excited to learn about our culture but in Sankofa Club they have that and as you know my son Jaden was king and his brother uh, ran and he was voted in by other children. They developed their own anthem. They developed a, a um, motto for the um, club. Um, they have a song, a coronation song. It really gives them empowerment to uh, take their history and feel differently about it and talk to their peers about it and have conversations with mom and dad about it and in a positive way. So we have these teachers and I encourage you to um, spread the message to other kids or grandkids. It's really a positive experience and what they teach these kids and they're so patient, what they have developed, it's really amazing. And so we learned that from Mr. Freddie Teller and his crew that are amazing. And then to have this trip to see my children have this living history with Mr. Jake Cameron is just amazing. So to have those two parts come together is really special. So we really enjoy that. And everyone part of this group, you have been so helpful, so patient, and so kind. And it's everything you said, Jay. We would come here and feel like we were home and we wouldn't want to leave. And I got to tell you, we don't want to leave. We really want to stay. So I, I, I really enjoy meeting everyone. Uh, this has been so special and I almost can't put it into words. So thank you everyone for becoming an aunt, uncle, grandmother to my children. That's a beautiful thing for them to experience that is, is really special. So thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you. We came as individuals who did not know each other. We are leaving here feeling more like family. I had a challenge, but I'm grateful that I'm here. I can't wait to bring the grand boys here. I brought the granddaughter this time. The next time, I can't wait to bring the grand boys here and some more youth here with me in the future. Uh, it, it's been a privilege to be in this space with everyone. I came here um, just by myself and my family was concerned. You're going across the world by yourself and like my friend here celebrating my 50th birthday that's coming up in a few months and this was a gift to myself. So I, since I've been here and being a psychotherapist, I'm always looking, observing, noticing and it's one thing to learn the history of this place, to learn the history of the slave dungeons, but to be here in person to um, see the sights, the sounds, the smells, all those experiences through our senses gives deep, deep life um, and heartache and grief. So there's been laughter and beauty on the one hand, and there's been a grief that I've needed to get in touch with um, regarding our ancestors. And I say ours because we are connected. So I am deeply, deeply grateful for Freddie, deeply grateful for you, Jay, for this partnership that you two have created a container, and that's the word, it's like, it's therapy language, but it's a container and it's attunement. Mm -hmm. That you two created space for us to come here and feel well cared for. Like we could be in the midst of all of our feelings, excitement and sadness. Whether we were high energy or low energy, you all created space for us to be who we were meant to be in this space. And like so many of us, I didn't know what to expect when I landed. But when I got here, I, it was no, the clouds didn't part and I didn't hear heavenly music, but I, it felt like home. As we were traveling to these different spaces, I would say, oh, this looks like my grandmom's yard or these sounds, I remember this from my grandparents' farm. So I just realized how connected I am, we are to this space, even though we were mo removed generations from this space. That I, I do believe that this space has been coded into our DNA. And our DNA is calling forth and saying, you're back yes. home. And I'm deeply grateful that you created an experience for us that said, I'm going to be OK. I'm OK with coming back home. I don't have to be afraid, because this is home. So I'm deeply, deeply grateful. And Jay, I pray for your protection and your blessings. I know you're traveling a lot. But my hope would be that you and your family would be well cared for. That there you. would be nothing that would disrupt, that would create chaos, or that would destroy but that you would be protected in this holy work that you 
and Freddie are doing because I believe we're not only being changed in who we are today, but eternity is being changed mm. because of what you two are ushering us into. Amen. So I'm deeply, deeply grateful, and it won't be my last time. Thank like, you. I'll be back. Thank so you very you. much. Hi, my name is Peyton, and I'm the Sankofa Nation King. And um, I like learning about our history, and I'm going to go back and tell everybody about my how it felt here and how it it was to be here and um right hotep which also means peace so they taught the kids in san Copa club always depart from a friend or family and say hotep which means peace so hotep all right, all right. thank you I just want to say what a marvelous, wonderful experience this has been, to especially to be able to experience it with my mother and my grandson. Um, gentlemen, because of you, my eight-year-old grandson, or seven-year-old grandson, he'll probably get a trip for his eighth birthday next year. Um, oh, you want to go? <laughs> Uh, okay, so now I have to have money for four, okay? Probably five for my granddaughter. But it has just been a just real blessing and real thrill. Um, first of all, I want to thank everyone on the staff for being so, so, so accommodating. Um, my physical circumstances have changed since I signed up in January left the, all of the equipment on the driveway. <laughs> and yet you guys came up with wheelchairs and, and workarounds, and I just totally appreciate that. Slave River was just very moving for me. The, um, when we got to the water, the one song that just kept running through my head is for every mountain that, <laughs> for this I give you praise. I've always revered my ancestors, but being here for those unnamed ones that I don't know, I give you praise. Thank you. That's all. So um, I just want to say that this has been a pilgrimage for me personally, and I go on to, uh, to Sierra Leone from here a week from now. Uh, you all have become my family along this journey, so I thank you first and foremost. Um, I know by me returning, my family has been restored wherever they were from in Africa. and. I've, I was fortunate enough growing up that I got stories that I couldn't confirm, but I listened to. That's like today when we went to um, Royal Shin Shinsi. Shinsi, Royal Shinsi. Lake Volta. Lake Volta. The largest man-made lake in the world. I can remember reading about that in the Encyclopedia Britannica. And so I couldn't pass that up. Um, I'm emotional, y'all. Uh, it's important for the youth to know who we are, where we came from, that they are valuable, that they are worthy. And I just really commend you all for bringing your kids here. And they're, thank you all. Thank you all for being a part of my journey. Okay? That's all I have to You're say. Right. Hey, everybody. Hey. So I just wanted to say to everyone here that I have found family and I have found love and acceptance and encouragement 
And what I take away most is when we were at the, uh, the grave site of, um, yeah, W.E.B. Du Bois, and they were talking about the spider, right? And as we were on the buses and we were on the travels and we were all talking, we were weaving together this web. We have so many connections between us, whether it's what we do for a living, whether it's where our interests are, whether it's just the fact that we fight for the truth of our existence. Each and every one of you has given me a reason to, to just keep fighting. When I was at Slave River, a few of you might have seen I was very upset, very upset. And Mario, he held me because there was a lot of pain inside me from knowing our history, from loving our people, and knowing we are not the things that they call us. But we can't, we don't stop them, you know? And, and just having to eat that was just eating at my spirit for so long. And when I touched that water, it hit me in that place where I was holding it. And I had to let it out. I don't know what home is gonna feel like after this home, but I'm, I'm sure this is gonna be the one that I dream about and wish to come back to. So thank you all. All of you have been wonderful to me. Um, I will miss all of you, but I hope we keep in touch. My heart to you guys, love you all. Thank you. Adventures of Darren and Destiny. And Darren and Destiny are twin brother and sister. And you go on their adventures throughout the African diaspora, meaning so African diaspora destinations, primarily focused in Africa, but we go to South America, we're gonna to go to the Caribbean. Their first book is going to take you to Ghana. And then we're gonna go on a safari. And from there, we're gonna to go to Ethiopia. And then we go to Salvador, Brazil. And what the goal is, is to be able to inspire curiosity in the continent of Africa, in our children from a very young age, and to really tell a more accurate story. Most of our children are exposed to negative images, late night infomercials about how bad things are, everybody's sick, everybody's poor, everyone's uneducated, but that's simply not true. So what Darren and Destiny and their family do is they go to different African destinations. They are learning about these different places. You're beginning to see positive images, but still telling the truth. I mean, that's the important thing, to tell the truth about some of the things that have occurred. But it's all done on a children's level so they begin to understand it. And it begins to pique their curiosity. They begin to learn more. And hopefully one day they will want to explore and visit the continent of Africa and its many countries. There's just so much that Darren and Destiny are able to do and as they're doing it, it's, it's like they begin to open the minds of a, a new generation and they don't get bombarded and indoctrinated with negativity. They're actually able to see positivity and inspiring images and messages about the African diaspora as well as those who are still indigenous to the continent of Africa, and they begin to learn more and, uh, and just see things differently. So I'm excited about introducing the adventures of Darren and Destiny.